It is truly time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It is always a pleasure to say those words after a long hiatus, and it's been a considerable hiatus. Um, I was just debating what the last game I played was, and I think it was Battlestar Galactica. Uh, but now we're going to be playing Kronos, which is a tough one for me in some ways. It, it involves thinking in a way that I don't generally enjoy thinking in a game. Um, I would have a hard time playing this game super competitively. Uh, it's not the sort of game I, I tend to be attracted to, but I can I can appreciate the game. And the game um, is sort of the prelude, I think, to um, the Zytol leg. And I actually took the liberty of fishing this out of the, the Time Agent box. The Zytol, this is what they look like. This is what the players are going to be competing to be. Um, the Zytol, um, because the Zytol leg really ties into to the the final the final game of this um, bracket the Omega bracket uh, more more directly I think than any of the other legs and that is time travel the the last game is going to be time agent which I've never actually played at this point um, but I know a bit about it from Callendale's videos and I think um, you know I think it probably captures time travel better certainly than Kronos um, but I think also even better than the U.S. Patent Number One and Chrononauts combination. Um, so actually, this this leg is about time travel, right? All the games have time travel in common, but they also have um, time travel for the sake of profit in common, which I think is interesting. I think it, I can very well see <laughs> that if our society right now, if our culture um, that I belong to, came up with time travel. Profit would probably be the first thing it was used uh, for, which is maybe not what the Zytal themselves are are looking to use um, time travel for. They are uh, a race in at least in when they get to Time Agent, not in Throne World, which is actually going to prelude uh, Time Agent. Uh, when they get to Time Agent, they're they're sort of down on their luck. All their worlds are lifeless husks, and they're going to use time travel to kind of restore their race to its former glory. That is their their whole thing. Um, that is not going to be the case in Kronos or in Use Pat Number One. The, our time travelers are going to be trying to um, using use time travel in order to make a profit, in order to make money. And I think in both cases. Well, no, in Kronos, the player with the most money wins, but really, they just get to carry that money over. Everyone's going to carry their money over to the Chrononauts patent number one combination. And then, I think that game probably ends... I don't remember how I... I, I, I have a rough draft of how I'm going to combine it. I gotta, I'm going to look at and kind of work out the kinks of that before I get into it. But I need to do a little time travel right now. Um, one of the reasons for my long hiatus, and I'm sorry, you could do some time travel and fast forward through all this talking, but it's too late. I'm almost done, I think. Um, one of the reasons for my long hiatus is I've been doing Animal Farm for a long time. I've played that game to death. I really enjoyed it. It's been a great exploration, but I don't really feel like I want to do it in the tournament anymore. I feel like I've played it enough for a, the time being. Um, and I had a great idea today, actually, on what I'm going to replace it with. So I'm going to do a little time travel and rewrite the tournament. I've done this before, but maybe not so drastically as this. We're going to start um, the Pope leg. And this is really exciting to me. I'm, I'm really excited to play this out. Um, I enjoy playing these games, but I enjoy playing these games in connection to see see uh, what what sort of... You can get, I think, I feel like you get something more from connecting games than you maybe do when you play the game itself. So in our Habsburg leg, we had all this questing stuff and adventure stuff. Um, here we have the time travel stuff. We had the kind of political stuff up here. Um, so the Pope leg is going to be um, more political, I think, even than our Kateni Fioli leg, which was up here. Are you getting this? Yeah. Um, we're going to start with Days of Decision 2, which is a game I've just been reading the rules for, which kind of inspired this whole shift. Um, but not only that, after Days of Decision 2, which goes, it, it's a, like an ideological look. Well, it, it's, a, it's a World War II game leading up to World War II, um, kind of the major powers leading up to World War II, and including World War II, focusing on the ideology. So it's one of those games with two maps, which I always like. I like games that have two maps going on. Uh, kind of like shapeshifters. Um, 
and one of the maps is the the ideology and then the other one's the standard world map where you know people are going to be producing things and everything but anyway so it's going to start with that and then it's going to go into this game that i've recently really been enjoying i played it with some people yesterday um called europa 1945 to 2030 which is all about, uh, it's a negotiation game about, um, and you get to put in puzzle pieces, about uh, creating the European Union. Really been enjoying that game. Um, and the, the time there, you know, Days of Decision ends in 46, this begins in 45, that's close enough to fudge it, right? Um, and then it goes to 2030, so I'm going to do something unheard of in the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament history. I'm going to do the same game twice. I have to do Imperial 2030 after that. So there's going to be these three games, each looking at um, sort of a different different kind of political time, I think. You know, we have we have all this stuff leading up to World War II. Sorry, a cat just did something. And then we have the, like, optimistic building of the European Union and kind of, like, trying to rebuild the world after that. And then the aftermath, which is the, the money um, and what the money has wrought. All right, so... Um, that's the little time travel I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little more time travel, but before I can do that, we have to draw some characters. And I hope you fast forwarded all this because that was a lot of blah 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 blah. Alright, let's shuffle up. This is going to be a five player game. Um, US pet number one supports six. Um, and I think the combination with Chrononauts would also support six, but Chronos only supports five, and that's fine. Um, Pet number one, it's been years since I played. That's one of those games I played before I re was really seriously into contained games. Um, you know, I, would, I would play some, some cheap-ass games back then because I've always been sort of a cheap-ass sort of guy. Um, remember it being roll and move. I liked that you could customize your time machine. I remember that about it. Um, the Chrononauts combination is going to be, you know, you can move around the board like you could in US patent number one. And I think you're still trying to get the the first patent, but maybe you have to repair the timeline to be like yours. I don't remember. I'll have to see if I can find my notes on that. Um, but the US patent board has the, the little squares that are different, like time periods. They're different years, but I think I might have them represent a range of years. So in order to, to change the timeline in Chrononauts, you have to be in the appropriate space in um, US Pat number one. And I think I'm taking out a lot of Chrononauts cards. There's not going to be any of the like, collecting items, I don't think, in it or anything like that. And a lot of the, the cards are not going to be used, maybe the action cards, because um, the play is going to proceed differently. But I think it'll be pretty pretty fun. I think it might have more of a time travel feel even than Chrononauts did. Chrononauts was kind of like a cross between time travel and flux, but the, the timeline was cool. Um, so I want to use that with another game um, and see what we can do with that. Let's draw a character, see who's going to do the time traveling with us. I recognize this guy, Oblio. I'm um, sorry, my cards are falling all over the place. I need to set them somewhere else. I always put them on the slick seat, and then they slide on the ground when I do my character draw. That's not a good idea. He's a photographer for Life Magazine. And I, I think I've played with him like early on in my real people card days, um, when I first started playing with him. His secret fantasy is to play in the World Series. He saw the Rolling Stones seven times. His pet peeve are people with attitudes. I think he means like a certain kind of attitude, because I think everyone has a sort attitudes you know about different things like you might have an attitude to, about gay marriage or an attitude about uh, drivers um, a pet peeve is actually an attitude he has an attitude towards people with attitudes um, he'd like to meet the next Nobel Prize winner for medicine huh his personal motto is sleep with one eye open Ooh, I bet he likes Metallica too uh, he's most proud of his girlfriend and he's a jock in high school He's understanding, sexy, and warm. Oblio. Oblio, he's got a little mark on his eye. I wonder what the story is behind that. Or on, on his cheek. All right, let's see who's going to play with Oblio to try and make money. It's been a while since I played Kronos. Um, i got to kind of remember what you're trying to do. I know it involves building buildings and getting points, probably. I th no, I think money, which is kind of the points in this game. There we go. Ooh, I have definitely played with TD. 
TD is from he's from the Shogun. I my my um my Shogun video, not my Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament Shogun video, but my Shogun Shogun video, which was kind of the precursor to the Real People Multi Game me Mega Tournament Solitaire Mega Tournament. TD was one of the players. So um, Fries has already been in. Um, he was in in the Shadow of the Emperor Emperor, and then later um, Helden and Der Untervelt, That whole group of games, Return of the Heroes, um, and then. Betty Crocker got grandfathered into the Baralti uh, leg of the tournament because he was the Shogun. I hope that's not a spoiler for those of you who are watching these out of chronology. That's part of time travel, though, people. Um, but TD was also in that game, unless I'm totally off base, but I'm pretty positive, yeah. Um, he's a teacher. He'd like to swim with the whales. Just a reminder for those of you who don't, didn't watch that. Um, and the usual fact is he's able to drive and bird watch at the same time. His pet peeve is parked cars taking up more than one spot. He'd like to meet George Washington. His personal motto is he'll do better next time. Uh, he's most proud of his family. He's always smiling and he's friendly, flexible, and curious. TD. I'm trying to remember. I remember he was in the lower right hand corner of my table. This was when my table was upstairs. I don't remember what color he was. Fries was red. Um, noodles was yellow. Uh, Betty Crocker was black. Uh, Cat was blue. So what's the other color? Is there a purple in Shogun? I think TD might have been purple. Did I? Is that a five-player game? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Next. Oh, okay, so this guy, speaking of Europa 1945 to 2030, I just, my first test game of that, I played with this guy right here, Desi. Desi, he, he played, uh, you're probably not familiar with that game. I, most people I've mentioned to have never heard of it before. But um, it's, all, it's about forming coalitions, and he would always try to go his own way. And he had the most political points, but he ended up completely failing in the victory point thing because he didn't take a lot of countries. He would just focus on one country and take it all for himself. Um, but Desi, he's a carpenter. His secret fantasy is to spend a week in Europe with a beautiful woman. He wears boxers. That's an unusual fact to him, uh, to wear boxer shorts. His pet peeve is Italian jokes. He'd like to meet Mimi Rogers. His personal motto is do unto others. And it stops there. There's no as you'd like them to do to you. So he just wants to do things to people. He's proud of his family traditions. His reputation in high school is loud and popular. Three words that describe him are nice to know. Um, I like his sweater. All right, so that's Desi. Let's see who else. Man, so a lot of return hits here from different different points in my real people history. I wonder if that has something to do with the time travel. Maybe they're all coming back to try and tell me something. We'll see who's next. All right, I have never seen her before in my life. This is JJ. She's in TV sales. She'd like to be a race car driver, and she's a DJ. DJ Double J. That that was like if that was once upon a time. If I was going to be a DJ, I wanted that to be my name. DJ Double J. Oh, so this might be one of those like time travel sex change things. Do you think we look alike? Let's see. Do we? Do we? I don't know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Maybe, I don't know. Um, she'd like to meet David Letterman. She doesn't like stingy people. She's young, but I'll get over it. That's her personal model. I'm young, but I'll get over it. I think I think this is me from the future. She's most proud of her spouse, uh, which I'm assuming is still Nellie. We said, till we die, so... Maybe, ooh, maybe Nellie is going to be the next one. Nellie's my wife, for those of you who don't know. Next one coming back in time. If it's a man, that's probably the case. Um, she's crazy, because I don't think there's a Nellie card. There's probably one that's like a, a man that looks vaguely like Nellie. Crazy, outgoing. Three words that describe her are quick, passionate, and creative. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Let's see, crazy, outgoing. I was not super outgoing. Kind of. I kind of didn't. I tried to ignore people in high school. I'm trying to compare these to, to myself. I wouldn't mind meeting David Letterman, but I, it's not. Maybe, but maybe as I age, I'll appreciate uh, late night talk shows more. TV. See, I couldn't be. A, I'm, I would be a terrible salesperson. I don't. I don't. Um, I, yeah. Anyway, so maybe that's not me. Maybe I change a lot. Maybe when I get all the estrogen. I start wanting to talk to others a lot more and um, selling, sell them things. But 
See, she's wearing kind of a mock turtleneck, and I hate to have things on my neck. I don't. But now I could change too with with estrogen. Okay, let's see who else is coming from the future. Or I guess they could come from the past. Time travel works both ways, right? This will be our final one. And oh, her her nickname is Nun, and I've. I can't remember. I know I've seen this card before. I don't know if I've played with her or not, but it's a graduate student. Uh, her, she didn't have a childhood nickname. Uh, she'd like to be a space warrior. And the usual fact is she can place her leg behind her head. This is definitely not my wife. I don't think she's that flexible. Um, pet peeve is empty roll of toilet paper on toilet paper holder. That's a pet peeve of mine, too. Maybe this is me from the future. Um... It's not a horrible pet peeve. I don't know if that's one I would pick out, but I feel like, you know, you use it. You re... re, re, re. She'd like to meet Lucille Ball. Uh, her personal motto is, life is meant to be savored, not slurped. Okay, this is not me. Um, her talent as a performer she's proud of. She's very friendly and achiever. Three words that describe her are outgoing, personable, and sincere. This is none. We'll have to just call her none because... Um, I don't know if you know the 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 inside story on the real people multi game mega solitary mega tournament, but I get their names from on the backs of these cards. It says childhood nickname, so it's actually not their their real name that their parents named them or that they named themselves should they have chosen to get themselves renamed. But it's their childhood nickname, um, which I guess is their peers maybe called them that, or maybe their parents called them that as a nickname, um, and that's just what I refer to them as. So we have none. JJ, DJ, Double J, um, Desi, TD, and Oblio. Oblio, which um, I don't know if he's named. There was a cartoon called The Point, with, whose main character was named Oblio. All right, but that's neither here. That is there, but it's not here. Here is Kronos. Real people, multi game. Let's start. What for you was but a moment. For me, it was several hours uh, after I cut. Um, from that fabulous introduction, I went and uh, scanned over the rules of the game, and before I finished that, I started vomiting a lot, and had some ver some flu other flu-like symptoms, which I won't go into. Um, but the point is, is that it's now several hours and uh, later, but I'm able to do this. Uh, my energy's going up and down right now. I'm up. But it could be that the, that we have to stop suddenly, so that's that's the point. Um, but during that time, um, when I was sick, or yeah, well, I still kind of am. But um, during that time when I was not filming, I did go back and watch a helpful review of Kronos, um, and I found out where I've seen Oblio before. He is in the background in some of the shots. He he was actually one of the people I played. Chronos with before, funnily enough, it was a it was a playthrough just to 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 play the game or to learn the game rather than to get into the personalities. However, so I didn't really read up on who he was. It was kind of a and plus, you know, here's a little history lesson on the real people multi game solitary mega tournament. When I when I set it up, I I didn't know a lot of the games I was setting up. Part of the reason I was doing it was to kind of so that I would explore these games, right? It gives me something I have to do in order to explore them all. Um, and I wasn't... Uh, I, I hadn't even played that many games solo, I don't think. Uh, so I, I was not real up on... I didn't have much of a sense of what games would be good solitaire and which aren't. This one is not one of the better solitaire games for me. Um, any game that you can kind of calculate with people, I, I feel is is a bit harder on the solitaire. But it's still going to be interesting. It's still going to be fun. Um, definitely works with the time travel. There's not a lot of time travel games, so you take what you can get. Um, so let's get started up. Teacher TD, why don't you teach us the game? He's going to be starting. Um, there wasn't a purple cube. I'm not sure if what color he was in Shogun, but he went with green. He actually was yellow in the last game I played with him. He just, yeah. Okay. Um, so basically what, what you're doing in the game is you're playing sets of cards, okay? So 
their cards come in three different colors, and that's that's the only kind of cards in the game. So you're going to play sets of cards in order to build buildings in one of these three time periods, okay? So there's three time periods here. You ha each player has two time travelers, and they can travel through time at the cost of their resources, which is also their points for winning the game. Um, they can travel through time. And then each each time travel traveler can play two cards. Um, a turn. So if they want to build a bigger building, they have to be in the same time period. But if they want to build something like this, they could just go ahead and do that if they had two oranges. Now there's um, there's a there's a couple rules on placement. One of the more important ones is domain rule of domain. So um, the buildings are going to create what are called domains, which are buildings that are all adjacent to each other. All right. Uh, when you build in the past, it's going to ripple forward into the future. Um, and that's mainly what they're doing. Um, and then in the fourth and the seventh turns, there's going to be a scoring round. And how the scoring works is um, whatever domain you have the, I think, the strongest orange building in, I want to say, in whoever has the strongest orange building in each of the domains in this age, which is the age of might, the age of the orange buildings, um, they get points based on how many blue buildings are connected, okay? And then here it's the same thing with purple buildings. Um, this is the age of reason, a little different. Uh, you get these blue buildings here, these are the, uh, uh, I don't know, the, they're not military or religious, I forget what they're called, I'm uh, feeling a little weak. Um, the city buildings, whatever. And these, when you play cards, you're not, you can't build in this age. You're playing cards to like put represent representatives into those buildings. And so, if you have the most representatives in a domain in this uh, future age, the age of reason, then you score based on the orange and purple. So here you score based on blue. Here you score based on blue. Here you control blue in order to score based on orange and purple. And that's basically the game in a very tiny nutshell. It's it's one of those games that I feel like is not that hard if you have someone to teach you, but maybe takes a little bit with the rules. They're, they cover everything in the rules, but it, it's not really um, in an intuitive manner, maybe. All right, so TD's starting off. He's going to keep these two cards. You can, um, and then he's going to play both of these. All right, and he's not moving any of his time travelers because he could move somewhere, pay some money, but he might not want to be there next turn. Um, and he wants to save these two cards for later. All right, so he's playing this card here. That's going to let him build this little tiny building. He doesn't get to put any sort of control marker on it. He just gets to build it. Okay, and then he is also going to do this one to build another little a little orange guy right there. Um, these blue buildings, for those of you who care, uh, are the only buildings that can go on the water. Then TD is going to draw two cards to replace the the ones that he, he used. He, he would be able to discard if he wanted to, and then his turn's done. On to Desi. Right, and here's what Desi has. He has three orange cards, one blue. Um, the, having three of a kind is rather good. Now, normally what he would be able to do is he could turn this um, this building here, he could upgrade it into a larger one by paying the difference. The larger building here is a four, so that, you know, that's that's its construction cost, basically, and also the, the point payoff. Um, and it also says where it is in the hierarchy, so it's highest in the hierarchy. And the hierarchy is important because if Desi only had one orange card, for example, and he wanted to add on to this domain, he wouldn't be able to put another little guy there. Because you can only have, for the orange and the purple buildings, the military and the religious buildings, you can only have one of the very highest. Okay, There can only be one king in the castle, so to speak. Um, so there can be no more one orange buildings on this domain here. And remember, that's all the adjacent buildings until there's a two or a four. Okay, and that's the highest. There's three levels of each building. And Desi decided to split up his orange cards. He used one to upgrade the card that TD, or the the cat, the little military building that TD placed in order to bring it up to 2.9. Notice he put a cube up there then. Um, that shows that he has control over that particular building. And anyone who, uh, you, can't, you can't control a one building. It, it can only be a higher level building. So when you do that, you have control. And now he's eligible 
So say if it was the end of the round four right now, he would get two points because he has the highest orange building in this domain. So he get all those points. And he also put another one down here. So right now he's controlling two domains that will score him a total of four. He also got two coins. Um, when you put down, when you get a two building in a area, um, in the, the first area, the age of might, the first, I should say age, right? The, f the age of might, then you get a coin. If you put one, if you build a building here, you get two coins. Um, reason why is because buildings here are more vulnerable and also they do less for you. If you build a building here, and I gotta do this in a second, they ripple forward in time. If you build a building here, it ripples forward in time, but it doesn't ripple backwards, okay? Because time generally flows in one direction, at least to us. Can't build a building here, so there, that's not an issue. All right, Oblio, in his turn, he had four orange cards. This is very unusual. And I actually, I don't normally do this, so it's kind of funny that that it happened this way. In this, this case, I actually dealt him out one at a time. I, you know, it takes, it's a little more time consuming, but I actually did that this time. Normally I just kind of, kind of put them one at a time on a person. Uh, but we've had a lot of orange cards right in a row, so I wonder if, I don't know what these guys have yet. It helps not to look at other people's hands when you're playing a player to kind of decide what they're gonna do. But anyway, he placed a, a big four. Okay, so that's, that's gonna rule this domain. There's no way out of that, um, out of that there. Um, you might think it would have been better had he placed it like this, and that's another little rule to this game, which is why, one reason it's help, helpful to have someone who knows it, right? Um, another rule of this game is you can't connect two domains with anything other than a blue building. So putting it here would be connecting these two domains, and you're not allowed to do that. So he has to put it there. Now, on a later turn, he could connect it with blue buildings to here and here, and thereby like bring those points into his domain, uh, which is maybe what he wants to do. We'll see what kind of cards he gets when he does that. Oblio is experienced at this game. I don't remember him doing very well, but I, I don't really remember who how, how that game went. I guess I could go back and look at that review and, and see who it looked like won. All right, so you're about to witness some time travel. It's Nun's turn. She is actually going to spend two... ECU, and that's the money in this game, and she's going to travel both of her people. It's one coin to travel anyone. She's traveling all the way to the future. There she is. She's in the future, which I think is maybe the... This is... Yeah, I think her people are probably from the Age of Faith, if you look at them. Right? That's, that's the Pope. Or no, a bishop. Um... So that would probably be from here. But I guess they probably still have bishops then. So, she, But anyway, she goes all the way here. She sends both of her people. That's pretty expensive. Um, maybe kind of wise, though, not to... There's a lot going on there. And it's wise because of the cards she has. So she's got a bunch of these cards here. And you get to see what she does with them. So these cards she can use to put little votes on the different spots. So she's going to put a cube there, a cube here. She's going by what she sees. And a cube there. Actually, maybe she'll put a cube there. Okay, so right now if there was a scoring, she would get three points for this domain here. She wouldn't get any, well, she'd get one for this. But now she has this other card here, and she can use that, I do believe, on this building to renovate it. And that basically just bumps up the points. All right, so that's gonna be worth four points to her, so long as she has the majority on the blue buildings in this domain. All right, what we speculate is me from the future, uh, DJ Double J. She's going to do, what is she gonna do? Okay, yeah, she's going to spend a coin and jump one of her guys forward. I think she's gonna jump this one. This one seems more future -y. This one seems more adventurous, right? Um, so let's jump him forward. She's gonna throw down two blue cards and put control marker here and a control marker there. Okay, so she's got her bid there. And then she's going to use her orange and her purple card to take just little tiny buildings. And this is maybe a risky move. Um, she's going to put one there and one there. Put out a little bit of bait maybe for someone to develop those so that um, she can then have it in the future. <coughs> And TD just bit. He um, built a, he upgraded there and there, both of what um, 
DJ Double J had put, and he added a, another little civil building up here just to give himself an extra point if he keeps control of this domain. And for his turn, Desi didn't do much. He just upgraded this building and then drew some cards. So that's going to make his mighty, mighty domain there worth an extra two. It's also going to help. Um, it's also going to help none quite a bit. Oblio followed up by building a rather the the middle sized. Um, we'll say it's a monastery. I don't know. There's probably a, a, I have a sheet somewhere that says what they're all called, but the middle sized pinkish building um, got himself a coin. Went up there. He's got a good domain here now. Um, so if he's if he has a guy there in the um, Age of Faith during scoring, he can score on that. And he also connected this domain to this little building there. So that was that was one card that got him two points essentially. Because I don't think there's any way anyone can take this domain away from him now. I think he has that. Um, now people can destroy these little buildings if they want, except for the ones that are painted on the board. So they could do that to lower his points, but it's it's at a cost of money for them. Um, Nun is looking nice up here. If she can if she can populate this town as well, that's a pretty good um, area. And then she also has this that could be worth quite a lot of points. It's her turn right now. And she did. She had the right cards to populate this place and to renovate um, this this fortress, I guess. I guess that's probably a castle and that's maybe a fortress. I don't know. Maybe that's a keep and that's a castle. That could be it. Um, which is kind of dangerous, actually. She only has one cube in there. And she, since both of her people are in this future age of region, reason, she has no ability to um, add any other buildings to vote. Someone, if they had the right cards, could set it up so that they build a building in the past have it pop up and populate it quickly and then they would have control of that that six those six points that are sitting there we'll see what happens with that uh, she is nice it is nice for her that this is close to here um, it's not looking like though that that's going to join up in the future because this is a tiny building and tiny buildings don't echo forward and you can't upgrade in this such a way so it'd have to be like it'd have to be a situation where someone got rid of this Possibly she would get rid of that and then upgrade it. So that move there actually kind of gave her a little bit of a headache. Kind of made this cube not so useful. And DJ Double J did it. Not totally. She did it kind of riskily. So she um, she jumped ahead to the Age of Faith and upgraded this this little hamlet into a village, we'll say. Let's say Hamlet Village City. That sounds right. Um, reason why is if she did it back there, that'd be handing... Um, That'd be handing Oblio two points by doing that. So by jumping ahead, she was able to uh, disallow Oblio that point, those points. She does uh, open herself up to some trouble, though. This building could get um, rippled away, and that could uh, disrupt her plans there. So she's got to hope that, that that's enough of a gambit to uh, pay off before perhaps Oblio... Actually, most likely Oblio, though also none could do it, um, does something to disrupt this building and get her out of there. Uh, it's also a risk because, you know, none is going to have another turn before she gets any cards. And she doesn't even know if she's going to get blue cards, right? And so none could fill it up regardless. But she, she gave a shot at it. Okay, mistake alert. And I'm just going to keep playing because, you know, we're already here in the game. I don't want to start over... And, you know, this is what TD would want anyway. Um, first move of the game, TD put a little tiny build in here. And this is probably the one. He should have had a control marker on there. I didn't put a control marker on there. And thus I forgot that someone else, namely Desi, could not upgrade it. Didn't end up being in Desi's best interest. So I think it might have, you know, spared TD the wasted time of upgrading that building. I don't know. I don't know what would have happened, but we're just going to move on. Desi finally did some time traveling. He sent this little guy here uh, to the Age of Faith. He has a mustache. His other guy is in a suit of armor, so he thought he should stay here. And he sent him um, to go build a little tiny church uh, right there. So he's going to get to, to sponge off these points um, at the end of next turn, hopefully. That's kind of his goal. Um, then Oblio, he once again is helping none. He upgraded his... Um, 
his pink building to the largest pink building. So now there's this haunted house here, um, which if she can upgrade that, that's going to be worth a total of five points to her, which is which is not bad, unless of course someone outvotes her in that area. And Nun got very lucky. She had three blue cards, so she was able to not only um, start to fix up the haunted house with with her cube here. This this just means it's on the way to being fixed. If she can put another pink card down, it will flip over to its five side. Um, and she also was able to fill up this. So she's gonna she's got a pretty solid majority there, and um, you know she sealed off this area for herself. So that that was a pretty nice turn for her. Let us see how DJ Double J responds. All right, and Double J finished the renovations of her own that she was working on here. Also sent her guy back. He was in the Age of Faith, back to the Age of Might. So he's back here now, and he built a little um, castle or a keep, uh, which spun forward in time. Uh, it's going to give her a point off of this, you know, assuming things don't change next turn. Um, and also... That's going to give her add a point on that, and she can add to that as well. Uh, so not a not a horrible move. This is going to be the scoring round. We're starting with TD now. This game people score after their turn, so could be the same. You know, multiple people score off the same domain. That's possible. All right, it's time for TD to score. It being round four. Um, so he he sent a guy forward into the Age of Faith, which he needed to do in order to score on his his big building right there. Um, which really, the big building isn't going to score him a lot, but it's going to make sure that he gets these points. And he added to the points that he's going to get by adding to this building here. Um, he would have liked to have added to, created this, made this, uh, this hamlet larger in the past. However, that would have um, conflicted because there's already a, a building of that size in this domain. So if he had connected the two when it was smaller, um, he would have lost out on the points. If he had connected to the two after he had upgraded this, which is what he did, also did this turn, um, I think he would have had to downgrade his own guy, because you have to always follow the rule of hierarchy. So that's going to give him two extra points. It's also going to make things a little trickier for... Um, for uh, DJ Double J in the future because now you know she she had this relatively safe locale that she was holding with one not super safe though because you could see how easy someone could come in and mit open up the the vote for uh, so to speak um, so now there's three other cubes she's got to kind of defend against uh, potential cubes in there for those uh, you know several points um, so he did that he also built just a little little tower right there which is going to give him a point and he gets to score all of that right now so he's going to get one point here one point there three points there that's five points um, which is money and then here he's going to get another four so he's going to pull in nine we'll take a ten and he can bring in one Desi in, in the age of my he just upgraded his castle to kind of solidify this not totally necessary in a scoring turn but on future turns it's going to keep him um, it's going to keep this domain domain his own I think if Oblio decides to join them which I think is what he was moving towards I think Oblio loses out I think his his castle would have to get smaller so um, there's going to be kind of a bubble around each of these as it goes forward and then in the age of faith he didn't have too much to do um, he got himself a point by building a, a little tiny church and then he also did something kind of interesting which I've never seen done in the game he built the same building again <laughs> another small building because they don't ripple forward um, not sure why he did that really uh, I don't know what the reasons are but um, so point scoring he is going to he doesn't score in this domain because he doesn't have the largest building um, but he does get a point there and he gets one, two, five, six there. So that's seven from the Age of Might. And then the Age of Faith, he is going to pull in one, two, six. So that's a total of 13. Not too bad. Um, he really did a nice job of just kind of leeching off of this, this, this little bit success. So 13, he said. I'd say he's probably in the lead as of now.
Right, Oblu with a handful of blue. He sent some guy through time. Um, this uh, this fellow here, he's um, sort of aristocratic, right? I can't really tell. Yeah, yeah, I think so. He sent him ahead and jumped on this domain right here. So he now has the uh, majority as of this scoring. That's going to give him six points there. He neglected, interestingly enough, his his the Age of Faith, where he had quite a large building, but not as many points. So he he was kind of building that up, but he was really hoping to link the two, uh, right? But that he can no longer do that because of Desi's tower. If he linked the two, then he could just build on um, civil buildings in the past and have it score in both places. That's not the case, however. So he he upgraded this this town here, has four, six, plus the six he got in the future, that's 12. All right, and Nun completed her construction here in the south, um, had the, the exact right cards to complete both construction jobs, and she also placed another influence here. That's not going to help her at all right now, but maybe in future turns it would be. Would um, Since she needed three cards to do her renovation, she wasn't able to travel anyone in the past in order to try and score somewhere else. That's one disadvantage of having both your people in the same age, is you're only going to be able to score in that age. So you, you lose one of the, the three possible scoring opportunities by doing that. But she's made out pretty well. She got six off of this domain and nine off of this one. So that's 15. She's the highest scorer so far. However, she didn't have a lot of money to begin with because she wasn't building buildings. That's another source of income. So I don't know that she's winning. I'm going to tally it all up after um, DJ Double J's turn. I think DJ Double J might be shooting herself in the foot, but we'll see. She traveled her person in the Age of Reason back in time. She wasn't going to be able to score anywhere there. She lost all of her advantage. She was spread around. Oh, I guess she had a point there. Hmm. She could have got a point there, but she decided to do this instead. Um, so she's going to first take two, two orange cards that she has. She's going to upgrade this building here into a palace and that is going to ripple forward in time which is not super helpful to her right now though but she hopes it will be in the future we shall see it goes away that's all the big palaces we can have um, and then she's going to do something that you haven't seen yet so I'll show this to you she's going to play those two and she's going to upgrade this town here. Now that's going to combine the domains, correct? Um, which if she had, if her building had been the same strength as TD's, that would have messed her up. But that's not the case right now. Um, she does get a coin, which is important because she's not going to have much. Um, so that's going to ripple forward. Oh, let's see. She's got to put it in such a way so that, it, okay. She'd have to do it like that. That might be tricky. I gotta think this out. Because what she wants to do is she wants to ripple it forward so it's different than the ones in the, the future so that it takes the people out of her area. So she might have to sacrifice points in order to do this, right? So the nice thing about being able to do it this way is she's gonna get two points. But that's the exact same configuration here. So that's not going to uh, bust anyone out. Whereas if she does it like this, she's given up on two points, right? But that's going to cause this building to be paradox out of existence, as well as this building and its population of blue and red folk. And I think that's her main goal now, because I don't, I don't think she feels like the two, the two points are um, really worth it. So that just kind of moves it right over there. And then she's, she, yeah, if people wanted to um, add on to, add p cubes there, it's not going to be part of this domain any longer. It's too bad she doesn't have anyone there now to um, score off of that. If she had, you know, she doesn't have to upgrade this in this case, right? So she can go back, bring this guy back, not have upgraded that there, right? Not have upgraded it here. So it's back to just being a castle. Cause she's not joining the domains. That's the main reason she wanted to do the upgrade in the first place. Do it like that. Like that. I allow them to go back even if it's not kosher in all game groups. I'm always okay with it in person, but 
Um, I usually don't ask to do it, but in real people, I'm okay with it because I figure they're spending a lot more time thinking about their action than I do because uh, they have wall the other people's turn, so I allow them that. Okay, so she's she's got this now. She's got six points. She had the two orange cards that she used. So she can use one to upgrade this up t to, to two. And let's see, so she spent the coin and got the coin. Upgrade that to two. What's she going to do with the ad additional orange card? She can upgrade this to two. And that's a little bit better for her. Right? Yeah. She sent the guy. Oh, she still sent the guy back. Okay. So she loses a coin. But then she's going to pull in seven, nine. That's a little bit more respectable than what she had. Still not the top player. Let's count it out. And then um, I think we'll call it. That's 10, 17. So none has 17. DJ Double J has 10. Um, now remember, she scored the most in one move, but she, she wasn't, hadn't been building. Oblio has 13, 17, 19. So he's our, our leader so far. Desi has 13, 16, 19. So Oblio and Desi are, are tied. Um, they were both kind of the castle guys. So TD was as well. And TD has 16. So these two are ahead. And then, then none. Then TD, and finally DJ Double J. She she was the one who got stymied the most, so that's not surprising.